filling out this moment anyway. Right? Oh, I'm very grateful for right. my father. So, you wanted me to go was, into that a little more? <laughs> I mean, I want. I feel like I want to. I know Dad's holding the camera and he's doing double duty, but I'd like to see if you take the camera for a second, and I want Dad to get on the mic real quick oh, because give him a minute, sure. I want to ask Dad a couple questions here. I think it's awesome that you had this opportunity to have this experience with your son because I don't know, I don't, I mean, of course there are lots of great dads out there and lots of great sons, but this is a pretty special situation. So I just want, what, first of all, tell me, because I've just been calling your dad, but, but, yeah. but what's your name, hon? First name is Al. Al, Al. good yes. to meet you, Al. Yes. So Al, tell me, what do you do for a living? Well, for uh, 30 years, I was an elementary physical education teacher in Jefferson oh. County Public Schools, and I've been retired for the last two years. Go JCPS. Yeah. My mom's retiring this year from yeah. JCPS. Yeah. Not PE, English as a second language, but yeah. still. I think anyone that's been in that long, it's just like our, our armed forces. I feel like you did your time. Good job. Yeah. So JCPS teacher. Now, I, so I can understand some of this now. You're giving me a little more of this background because I tell people that with my mom being a teacher, and my father being a pastor, that I was born to talk, that I was just gonna end up doing this. Um, so that was kind of my next question for you, is did you did you see these kind of leadership qualities and goals out of Chris when he was growing up? Well, uh, first of all, you know, as parents, uh, and especially with me and my particular job, uh, I spent, as you probably would understand, as an elementary teacher, words of encouragement is every second. Absolutely. And in the gymnasium, no different than a classroom, I encourage and encourage and encourage little kids. This is the secret to life. You fail your way to success. If there's not someone in your life that will help you through that process, it's going to be hard. Uh -huh. Mom and dad presented that philosophy to our children. There's nothing wrong with failure. You learn from it and go on. Yeah, so how quick you get back up. Exactly. So as long as you get up one more time than you're knocked down, you're a success. But he heard these words of encouragement at home. We always encourage our, our both, uh, we have a daughter and his sister's older than him. And so the atmosphere was there for growth. The seeds were planted from childhood on. And um, from this experience about his mom you know, passing, uh, he looked at me differently. And it was pretty immediate. He realized that I'm it. I'm the last parent. Yeah. And when he tells you that I'm his hero, I, I, I can't tell you what that did to me, that for a son to say that about that, you're my rock, you're my hero. And as he said, if I live to be 150 years old, my dad, no one could love me as much as he has. So I think, you know, when you plant seeds, one day it's gonna, they're gonna grow. And what's happening now, we're, even though my wife's not here, we're seeing the fruit of all that planting of those seeds in our children because his sister's the same way. And so this attitude of gratitude has been in him a long time. But because of, of what happened with his mom, and then he, he wrote that letter to me, and then we went to Florida, that's where we went for those 18 days, the seeds were already planted. And then when he started thinking about, wait a minute, surely somebody else wants to do this too. And one of the first people that did it was, was a friend of his wife who on her birthday wrote a letter to her parents. And you know, when you start thinking about that, the ripple effect of what you can say, mm -hmm. and it's positive and negative, but I'd rather it be positive ripple effect than a negative one. You, you gotta realize, put it out there to be a ripple, right? Well, do you realize just how far your words of encouragement can go? One word of gratitude for somebody. Our like words that. right now are going all over the world. Exactly. 
That's a pretty far reach. And so he always had some people from foreign countries write to the site. That's what's so great about technology. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think now is such a great time, you know, to enact something like this because it is about ease of use. So the more we can continue to right. utilize the technology to spread this kind right. of, you know, gratitude, I think is really amazing. You must be so this, very proud. This guy's ability in the tech world, as he said, social media, which us old folks were just kind of you catching don't Snapchat on. Out. Oh. You know, but I, 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 I'm at least doing a little bit of Facebook. So okay, we can be Facebook friends. Yeah. So <laughs> is he? came up with the thought about doing this. It is a bob. Mm -hmm. Writing a letter could be hard, but we find out that so many people, it's so easy, as like the other day at, at Cracker Barrel, we asked the waitress who was waiting on us if she could just give us three things she's grateful for, and he had his camera there. Bam, 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 bam. There's your took, moment. What, 20 seconds, and it even took that long. And we gave her uh, his card to go on the site, and I was there the next day, and one of the others later said, I saw, I saw her on, 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 the, on the internet, but she said she didn't look good. <laughs> oh. oh, I thought, that, you know, and I guess all women are going to think they're, you know, whatever they're having. He's going to have some problems with that, yeah, I think, uh, out in L.A. But it, <laughs> it, it is so easy to watch him approach someone sure. and get this gratitude a moment. It, it just... He's in New York City in one of the nice parks and just comes up to kids. Kids were playing in the park and just walked up and you just can't imagine the oh, gratefulness that came out of these kids. They're like, I'm grateful for this Lego. I'm okay. grateful for my ice cream. I'm grateful for this rock. So I what, love the gratefulness in kids. Well, what happens with gratefulness is you start thinking about, everybody thinks about, they want to think about big things. It's the little things. Exactly. Look. Everyone doesn't have two hands. Everyone can't even feed themselves. I know people that have to have someone feed them because they, they're unable to do it anymore. You just gotta be grateful to be able to get up in the morning. And so uh, even, I know this may sound silly to some people, but to even be flexible enough to put your pants on one leg at a time and can do that. Where some people, they can't do it at all. Exactly. And so I, 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 I think it makes me you more grateful. And what he does in the morning, he writes down three things he's grateful for every single morning. Now, what do you think that would do for your day? I think that's a very good practice. It would start off wonderful. Yeah, I should start off my day that way. Because, you know, there's, you know, I talked to someone the other day, and... They didn't like their job. And I said, you know, how sad that is that you wake up in the morning and you go into a job you don't even like. Yeah, that's Com rough. Compared to a person who wakes up and they're excited about the job they have and where they're going to go that morning. You realize the influence that you're going to have the rest of the day on people if you love what you're doing versus you're just making ends meet. Yeah, I'm a big believer in you, you got you to gotta be what you do. And you gotta, I mean, I gotta like myself. So I know that that's definitely a number one priority for me. So I know you could probably not be prouder of oh, your son, proud. Chris. This is phenomenal. Now you get to go see you two on the floor. You were just telling me. I love the fact that that, that Al here is gonna get down with Bono. So Chris, you've gotta make sure to Instagram that for us so that we can, I, cause I want proof. I wanna see Al like getting down with Bono at the show. Um, hopefully, we can get a, a gratitude moment out of Bono. I think that that yeah. would be very, very cool. Um, I know that I definitely want to support, and therefore I want, and we'll go ahead and have Chris post his website on our Facebook page. That way, any of you guys out there listening to Flirt Arts right now, you can hop on over and just very easily like that, click on that website, and then you can go help and see about this great trip that Chris is gonna take. So I wanna thank you, Al, because again, like I said, without you, Chris <laughs> wouldn't have even happened. So you really are executive producer of this. Yeah, this made, whole shebang. He makes me feel very important. And he said, Daddy, you are important. And so that gratitude and back to me makes me feel really good. And, um, I think one of the greatest gifts about gratitude, 
not only in giving it, but to receive it. Some people, it's real hard. Exactly. I'm one of those people. When someone wanted to compliment me, say something, I, 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 no, that's okay. That's okay. And now I'm just going to say thank you because that's coming from them and I need to receive it. So if there's any word I can give to the people out there, please don't stop someone don't from stop showing the gratitude. Right. Don't make an excuse for it like, oh, you know. No, just receive it and say thank you and go on because you, you, that person's trying to bless you and you're not receiving it. So I, I'm learning to receive gratitude as much as I give it. Well, it's good to hear that it, even a retired JCPS educator can still <laughs> learn to this day. Yeah. That may be a little bit of your wife helping out there, I'm just saying. I think mom may be showing Chris that she's grateful for what he's doing because surely she's looking down extremely, extremely happy about what's happening. So I can see this really blowing up as a worldwide thing that's going to be super cool. So I definitely want to say I knew Chris when. I knew Chris, you know, prior to his world tour of gratitude. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm glad that I got my gratitude moment in before before you two because Bono, like once he gets it's in, gonna it's going to overshadow gonna everything. Yeah. yeah, he may overshadow mine, so I'm glad I. I, I snuck <laughs> but I wanted to send you guys off with one of my favorite favorite songs. Um, and again, you know I love my musical theater, so one of my favorite songs is actually from the show Kinky Boots. Do you know the show Kinky Boots, Al? No, I don't. It's a pretty good show, I think. Um, but then again, I was, you know, an 80s kid. Yeah. So um, the music was done by Cindy Lauper. And I will say that it's, it's the overall message you should go for on this one. But this is one of their full company numbers, and it's called Raise You Up. 